What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the shop. Today we are continuing progress on the CD009 swap for the Turbo S2000. The last time I was under here, um, I had all this stuff off. So obviously to pull the transmission out, you gotta take the stop, uh, the stop, the top starter bolt out. Um, all that was out. We got the plate on. Uh, what else did we do the last video? Oh, I was ready to stick the transmission in. So I did that off camera and I'm going to tell you right now, that was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like with the trans under. Let me turn the light on so we can see underneath in the car. Um, yeah, it was, dude, I thought the hard part was gonna be the fab work. I never wanna take this transmission out again. It sucked. Um, and it's not like you can't just, I don't know, it's putting a transmission and putting a transmission in, but you gotta drop the subframe like as low as it will go I had to take a motor mount off on the passenger side and drop the motor even more. I had to take the turbo off so that the motor could drop even lower. And it was still like, I was still like this close to getting the input shaft angled enough to get it to start into the, uh, the pressure plate and the clutch. Um, yeah, that was freaking horrible. I think next time I do it, I'm probably going to pull the freaking turbo manifold, turbo shit, undo this. I don't know, like I'm half tempted. It makes you just want to drop the whole damn subframe and everything. I feel like that might be easier, but I don't know. Hopefully I don't have to do it for a while, a good while, um, or basically until we go to do like a twin disc clutch. So whatever, maybe I'll be calm by then. But yeah, you can see her kind of poking, poking in there. She's connected, she's in. And once you get it up past the part, it was crazy. Like once you got the uh, the input shaft angled right and it got up over the fingers on the pressure plate, um, I mean, it damn near fell in the car. So after that, it was nothing. It was absolutely, absolutely easy. But climbing under here, you can see old girl is in. Super in. And I am freaking pumped, dude. Uh, I showed you all this before, all the space and stuff when we were test fitting it. So I'm not going to go over that again. But it is actually a uh, clutch pressure plate. Uh, all that stuff is in. She's bolted in. And I actually popped the drive shaft in just to look at it. And dude, I mean the drive shaft is beef compared to the AP1, the stock AP, or the AP1 drive shaft. So yeah, not to beat a dead horse. It is in all the way. Um, I need to get, so obviously you have your speed sensor stuff here uh, and uh, reverse lights, all that crap. I'm probably gonna hook up reverse lights eventually. Um, I don't know, like I want to. I think the blue connector on this, I have to check. I think this blue connector up here is for your reverse lights. And I can get a pigtail from Nissan and wire that up. I am gonna do that. Um, That'll be obviously a little later on after I do some run down on the car and get it running driving. Hell, who knows? I might just order it and just do it while I'm under here. I'm talking. I don't know. I'm just talking. Um, I was going to hook up my clutch line, but you're using your factory master since this is a single disc clutch. Um, this dude's going to go into here, which is your internal slave. And then I got uh, my master cylinder bolt or a uh, like a brake line fitting here. This, I finally, I figured that out. I had to do some digging. So this here is like an AN, okay? So it's like a dash three. And then this here is freaking brake line stuff. So it's like a double flare or bubble flare or whatever. Um, I need to get an M10 by 1.0 female inverted flare to a dash three AN male. So for anybody wondering to go to that, to your still braided, that's what you gotta have. So, hope that helps out. This is the Dakota Digital. Here's, uh, again, part number. For all you people that might be interested in doing this, or any trans swap person, I guess you could probably use this if you're doing your transmission swap. Uh, I don't know if it's focusing or not. Yeah, there's part number SGI-100BT for Bluetooth. Um, this is a pretty nice little rig, they usually cost, I think it's about 100 bucks for this um i will try to find the pin out thing on this because I've, I've i've had to ask people uh how to do this but we're gonna go ahead and get the ignition and the ground done right now up here which i've already found uh i've already found this wire here is switch 12 
and then I'm just going to ground on the body here. Um, got my fancy meter out there. I just wanted to make sure. Um, you can use a test light. I'd rather use a meter. I mean, I'm a mechanic for a living. Test lights are great for like quick stuff, but this way you can actually see exactly what your voltage is. Like, you know, you know, you're not just assuming just because it lit the light up. Uh, yeah, key on. It comes on at 12, it stays on. Uh, so we're good there. And then obviously I don't have to run a giant wire from here to here or dragging all that stuff across. And then I'm just going to probably just lay this thing down in here like that and be good to go. Um, and then apparently, I don't know, you have to look on here. I think you use output four or five uh, where you're going to pull your speed off of. So a lot of guys will do where they take the... Uh, the factor the speed sensor out of the transmission and they just relocate it back here to the to the back wheel and make its little bra make a little bracket for it so then they'll cut the wire going to the speed sensor connector go into one of the inputs on the Dakota there and then they go from the Dakota on the other side of that speed sensor to the sensor so essentially you're just interrupting the signal so your signal is running through this your signal wire because you have a power ground and signal wire on your uh, for your vehicle speed uh, the sensor can continue to use its original power and ground with no interruption uh, if you do that route you would just have to lengthen the wires to the back of the car and then your signal wire would come from down here where all those connectors were we were just playing with You'll snip that wire, run it into one of these. I'll have to figure out which one, and then it's going to go out of here to there. And that's where the calibration is going to be made, the adjustment. Uh, that thing will adjust the speed sensor uh, that it's reading and then reinterpret it to your display and your dash your speedometer works and matches with, well, if you have different tire setups or obviously with the transmission setup, it's going to be much different just from the gearing change. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'll try to set this up and maybe uh, record a little bit. And I think on mine, I've talked to another guy. He said he tapped into the vehicle speed sensor for ABS on the back left wheel over here. So I'm going to pull some of this stuff out. And I think once you get back here, break all my stuff. I think, uh, hey, check it out. What the hell, dude? I guess I lost that light. Meow. My light! I found my light! Oh, it's dead. Well, cool. Uh, let me see. I think, yeah. That dude back there, you see her in the distance. That should be, I will trace it and make sure, that should be your ABS wheel speed sensor. So, I hear some people getting. Uh, codes, ABS codes. Obviously, if you cut that and you interrupt that signal before it gets to the PCM or to the uh, ABS control module or whatever, I you're going to have uh, you're going to have a speed sensor code because then it would almost be like the speed sensor is bad because it's seeing a different, it's not seeing the correct signal or the correct uh, input. So I'm thinking if I cut it and I just piggyback off of it. So basically it still has the wire going too. So the ECU is seeing what it's seeing, but then I'm pulling off and then feeding it back to that. I don't know. I've, I've I talked to another guy. He said he did that and he has no ABS codes. ABS works fine. Um, and it works as it should for the, for the uh, Dakota digital. Uh, and then some guys get codes, which I think it's because I think they're cutting the wire, interrupting that signal or not. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try it this way first. I think this, obviously, this is easier because it's less wiring. Uh, and it's also, I don't have to run a freaking uh, speed sensor. Yeah, I don't have to run a speed sensor. So, we'll see what's up and see how we get with this. All right, guys. So, we got <clears throat> simple, simple uh, power, ground, power, ground. So, it should light up. Let me find my keys which they are who knows who knows somebody has to know not me there they are i'm an idiot let's see so this thing should light up there ain't much to it okay. 
in this thing here. So it has a light. And then that means it's on. Obviously. Um, I need to download the app and try to connect it and just look at all that stuff too. So, yeah. So there's my power. There's my ground. I'm going to shove this girl down in here like that. Whatever. You know. I may double side tape. I may put a zip tie on it. I may not do anything. I may just shove it in here and just let it be. Um, but yeah. There's your power, your ground. And then I'm going to do a little more research as far as doing my, uh, my signal stuff. Want to hear one of the most annoying sounds in the world? Yeah, just leave that in there doing that for like 20 minutes straight. Okay, um, I can't really show you how it works because I can't drive the car because we got no shifters, do we? Uh, still waiting on that, obviously. Yeah, so she's lit up. And here you go, guys. You've got uh, your ignition 12. I told you we pulled it from here. Did that nice and clean. I like to be uh, clean with my wiring. Um, and then ground here. This goes right there. A little eyelet that's holding down the, the part brick handle. And then I like to sheathe and protect everything. So since I'm not going to be having uh, the S2000 trans in it anymore. And the boot where it has to bolt up to the bottom. I had a little bolt hole for it. For basically 10 millimeter bolt holes. Uh, and I ran my signal wire here. For that. Let me see trying to look through the camera so on your speed sensor down by well where you plug your speed sensor into your transmission there's three wires the middle wire is your signal wire which is a blue and white wire so I tried to emulate some of these colors up here with my extra wire that I got over my reels just to make it easier to remember so my blue wire which goes to a blue and white wire on my harness is going to output output number four which again will all be, used to be on the S2 with this setup, it should work just fine. Uh, but if you're using the Dakota, that's all different, basically, uh, parameters. So like 0 to 100, uh, 100 to 250, 250, so it's just different hertz settings and different ranges for that. So that will be specific to your application. Uh, and then we got, what the hell is it, yellow input, which is the wire coming off your speed sensor, or where you've piggybacked onto your wheel speed sensor. So let me show you what I did down here. Again, I sheathed everything for this one here. Just trying to make it look nice. Ran it through that little hole. And then all this stuff will be buttoned up and closed up. And I'll show you underneath. All right, guys, and then underneath here, it's just like this. So you got the wire. Let's see if I can move my light. <clears throat> so I got my little wire coming through the hole there. Nice and pretty, I zip tied it right there. Brought it over here, and I can't really show you everything because I put it all up, taped it up, tried to keep it clean. But three speed, uh, your three wires on your speed sensor, it's your middle wire, the blue, I think blue and white or blue and yellow, middle wire. And then you're just basically running that up too, and then just, you know, try to put everything up here nice and pretty. That way you don't have any uh, water getting into stuff. I should probably close these up too. Wouldn't hurt. These are old factory O2 sensors and stuff. And we don't do that because we're on wide band, custom tune, all that. All right. And this is probably the biggest pain. And realistically, I think you could pick any wheel speed sensor you would want to pick because you're just pulling wheel speed. I would prefer to pull it off a rear wheel over the front just because wheel speed, like when you're spinning or something like that, uh, obviously the front won't show wheel spin so back left here wheel speed sensor for your abs tapped into the yellow and red wire back there As you can kind of see on the clip there's a yellow wire with a red stripe and you're just gonna jump in with that wire i ended up splitting it in half stripping the ends stripping my yellow wire for that and then soldering it and then uh uh, crimping it with a uh, a cap and then taping everything up. I like to solder stuff if I can. A little tight in there, but I definitely would prefer a solder. Um, that was the hardest wire to get to, obviously, because you got to run everything back through the console, which that wasn't too bad. I think I got a little clip there where I showed. Slide it through here, sliding through this factory hole, and then taking off this little back panel here, and then you can slip it up through the crack. I'm really happy to get that on and wired up. 
hoping that it works as it should. If not, it's not a big deal. The only wire I really would have to change would be the wheel speed sensor wire. So if the ABS sensor for some reason doesn't like me piggybacking off of it, or if I get an ABS code or lighter issue like that, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the stock wheel speed sensor out of my stock trans, make a bracket, put it on, run the wiring, and then just recalibrate and set it up like that. So all in all, the majority of it is done. I mean, the brain work of it's done. I, now I understand kind of how it works. It's not a big deal. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. Um, really, we're just waiting on the freaking uh, the shifter. Once I get the serial nine shifter, we can bolt it up, put it in here, and get it set up. Uh, and then the drive shaft, which is sitting right over here. Um, I did pop that in the other day just to see how it fit to make sure, hey, if I'm gonna have any issues, I kinda wanna know now. That way I can start doing something about it while I'm waiting on parts anyway. Uh, and it fits perfect. Slot, slid right in, bolted right up, not tight. I mean, it's exactly the way it needs to be. So super excited about that. Um, yeah, just waiting on a shifter. And now that this is done, we're getting close. Thanks guys, appreciate you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.